Your Creative Push, Episode 32. If you want something so bad that you just have to do it, you're going to do it. Youngman Brown here. Today's episode is part two of my conversation with John Cantino. Uh, Yesterday we left off... um, talking about the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition, and that's where we pick it up today. So if you haven't listened, go back in your podcast player and listen to episode 31, or head to yourcreativepush.com slash 31. And that being said, I'll get out of the way and get back into my conversation with graphic designer and artist John Contino. It's shifting gears a little bit. Can you tell me about the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Issue? (laughs) (laughs) Dude, I mean... what a what a great project. I mean, and not for the obvious reasons, but like it was it was a very cool project. I mean, one of the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue is like one of those things that you just grow up with. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know how many years they've been doing it now, but I know it's a while because I know I've yeah, yeah. been looking at it for a long time. <laughs> um, <laughs> the guy who got in touch with me, who I think he's 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 really cool. Uh, this guy's named Chris Hersick. He uh, I think he's like. He's like vice president of design or whatever he is at uh, like Time Sports Illustrated. I know there was like a merger or someone got bored or whatever it is. But, um, you know, he was generally in control of the entire thing. Um, and he and I work on most of it together, just, just the two of us, which was very cool because there is a whole team that works on it and they do a great job and everything. But for the most part, it was just the two of us. And he's, you know, he, got in touch with me he was like how would you like to do some stuff for the swimsuit issue and i was like how would you like to see stuff in the morning <laughs> <You know? laughs> like i was just i was so ready because it's a, i mean first of all sports illustrated which is you know a national icon yeah um the swimsuit issue is another national icon it's a, it's something that people look forward to and just the way that it's treated you know it's a very special event and it was really it was really a privilege to be able to work on something that's like loved like that much by everybody like i you know it's we live in a very pc world nowadays but i mean you know despite all the you know the social media rumblings about this thing and that thing or whatever like people still really enjoy it you know it's Mm -hmm. it kind of appeals to basic human instincts but uh you know to be able to take it and not only that take it and shift it away from what it was normally looked at and kind of given this more artistic illustrative sensibility to go along with it i mean that's huge you know like that's got my fingerprints all over it i mean even other stuff you know i don't know if they've ever had any other designers who are that clearly themselves you know designing for it i mean i think with my stuff i'll be the first to admit it like sometimes stuff is just done wrong sometimes it's it's there's mistakes all over the place but that's that's kind of what i love about it so much and I am a perfectionist in the imperfections, so to speak, I guess. So it's like to see someone with that type of, uh, you know, fingerprint on something that massive in scale to me, I think is pretty cool. You know, it's like, I think, I think they, they, they were telling me that over 70 million people will see it in, yeah. in its, in its, you know, what it's marketing lifetime or something. That's, that's insane. It's insane. I mean, if people even knew, like, the way that this whole process works, they'd be like, wow, it's, that's interesting. <laughs> no, it's, it's cool. And I, I've, I've, you know, I, I got to admit, I when I look at the Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition in the past, it hasn't been necessarily for the typography and design, <laughs> <laughs> nor for, like, to see who the designer of, of the, the right. bathing suits are. But, yeah, usually it's um, <laughs> No. <laughs> No, but I think it's it's just so badass. That's such a cool thing to be a part of. And uh, like you said, yeah, over the lifetime of it, how many people see it. And also just like you're just like you literally like have stamped like history, you know, like the yeah. that's something that people look back at, you know, 50 years from now. They're like, oh, my God, look, look at how much clothing they were wearing. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> or, you know, like just and then you're there like to kind of define a time uh, like a a point in time i think that's just so cool that must yeah. be one of the coolest parts of of design it was really cool i mean the whole process took a while too actually i think we started it in so what was it it came out this year um i think in the beginning of february 
And we started working on it either June or July of the prior year. So it almost, it took us like, I think it was like seven months in total or something like that to, to do the whole thing. And I've yeah, worked there's on, quite, a, quite a few elements in it. It's, so much. I mean, I've worked on plenty of magazines and books and all that stuff before. And this one was real. I mean, it's so, I mean, they put so much work into it. It's just crazy how much work goes into this one, this one issue. Uh, it was cool to see behind the scenes of that too. <laughs> how far behind the scenes did you get? <laughs> Um, you know, it was cool too, cause Chris was, he was really open to everything too. And he was like, you want to do, you want to do some, uh, body painting? And I was like, sure. <laughs> but you know, That's like, awesome. <laughs> but to, to actually like sit there and it's like, you know, as, as cool as it would be to like hang out with a bunch of models in like Mexico or Hawaii or something and just like be on the beach and painting and, you know, doing whatever and just like having the rest of the day to just do, you know, like that, you got to think about the whole experience that goes into it. You know, like they are long days. It's not, they're not easy days, but they are long days. Um, but you're kind of like in this like paradise type of atmosphere and everything. And it's, you know, it's still really cool. It's a, it's a cool thing to do. Um, but on the other hand, I've never, you know, officially done any body painting before. So I would hate for my first big job to be that and have this whole mm-hmm. team fly to a place in the world. And have me just be like, oh, uh, wait, hold on. Let me just, you know, just like teaching myself as I go. So I, I turned sure. it down, but, um, just only cause I was just like, I'm, you know, that's too short notice, man. I gotta, I need like two years to practice this before I can just be like, <laughs> okay, I'm good to go. <laughs> what would your wife have thought? She, uh, it's so funny too. Cause like they always, everybody always asks that. They're like, oh, what'd your wife think? And I always kind of like look at her one and she's like, I don't, I don't give a shit. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> she's very confident herself so she doesn't she doesn't need yeah. to worry about so, me <laughs> go, yeah okay go go run along and body paint yeah. good luck with that <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> that's cool though um do, so do you get to see like the layout and then you do then you do your design you know what's crazy or do about they do it around you they um with 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 this particular issue normally when i do any type of layouts like that, I get the photography first and then I work in the illustrations over the photography so that we can play with the negative space and I can make sure that nothing feels cramped. But we had a lot of changes that needed to be made. Um, I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, some of the stuff was, you know, hidden from me for security reasons that I wasn't allowed to see or share or whatever because it is such a big thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but they kind of gave me like general regions to play with and general sizing to play with. So I had to, um, you know, use my best estimates to make it work. So it, it, it was interesting in that too. And the fact that it was very, uh, you know, there was like half a blindfold the whole time just because we had to keep things so secure just to protect from media coverage and leaks and all that kind of thing. It's got to be so interesting. Have you ever worked on any like other like kind of high profile like uh, things like that? Like where like this, they don't want you to know everything. Yeah, I actually one of the the craziest high profile project I ever worked on, and I don't think I've ever s- talked about this in public before. But why, why not? Um, I forget. I forget what the publishing company was. Whatever. But it was um, J.K. Rowling was doing a new book. The first novel she ever did outside of the Harry Potter series, which was called The Casual mm-hmm. Vacancy, or The Casual Vacancy, whatever it was. Um, so I got hired to design the cover. And there was um, a UK publisher and there was a USA publisher. And we were going back and forth. And it was supposed to be like super, super under wraps type of thing. Like, don't, like, it was so, it was so tight that, um, I couldn't email about it. I couldn't leave voicemails about it. Like it was when I sent comps, I had to send them by messenger. I couldn't email sketches. I had to do my sketches, um, copy them, seal them up in an envelope, have a messenger come. They would pick it up. They would bring it to the publisher. Um, and then he would send me notes back or we would get on the phone and we would talk about the notes and I'd have to, you know, write down verbatim what he was saying or he would send back like a you know like a transcript of what he was thinking back to me and that's how the whole process went i had to like burn cds and put flash drives in there just so oh my <laughs> yeah it was it was intense and then at, after all was said and done i think there was some type of 
um, miscommunication or some kind of change in direction. And all my work didn't even matter at the end because they have like s- some internal thing that was going on that they just handled it themselves anyway. And it's a shame because I can't even, I'm not even allowed to share it because it was such a like crazy tight security thing, you know, maybe down the line. But, uh, you know, it was so, everyone was so like concerned with leaks and mm-hmm. all that type of stuff that it was just like the most, I mean, it, it was, the only thing that was missing was like a secret service agent, like escorting <laughs> these things back and forth, you know? So it was, uh, yeah, it was interesting. It was definitely interesting. And I'm sure they, if I asked them about that, they would deny it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they show us the proof. <laughs> you know, there's no evidence of this ever happening. Never heard of him. Never heard of him. That, that has to be <laughs> such a hindrance, though. Like that has to, like, how did did that affect the creative process at all? Like, I mean, it was definitely it was weird because I couldn't do things on the schedule that I normally wanted to, only because a lot of times I'll end up working through the night and I'll send stuff at three, four, five o'clock in the morning. You know. So it's like when you're done, you know, we'll send the messenger over or whatever. So you can't send the messenger at 4 o'clock in the morning, 4.12 in the morning or something stupid like that. Like it was either wait until the next morning or try and get it done in the middle of the day. But middle of the day is always tough too because there's emails coming in, there's phone calls, there's meetings, there's whatever. The, the, the daytime is always one of the tougher times to get things done because everyone is trying to get things done. And everyone needs your opinion on this, your approval on this or – whatever you know so it's tough to kind of squeeze in like large chunks of work for large projects um you know at that time of day so you know i had to kind of shift the schedule around and put other people on hold for a little while while that was going on and it was an interesting process but it's a fun story you know yeah for sure (laughs) are you a fan of the harry potter books or no i'm not not, you know I, I, i you know nothing against it i just uh reading is something I just don't have time for. And I'm a slow it's reader, a, you know, I'm just like, I can't, like, my wife will whip through a book in, like, two nights. Like, a huge book, like, friggin' 7,000 pages or something. But I sit there and I'm, like, reading the first chapter for, like, two and a half hours and I'm like, ah. Me too. I'll watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny too because as a writer, like, I barely ever read. And I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I'm a, such a slow reader too. Like, I think I might have ADD. Like, <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like, I think I, I didn't get diagnosed for it, but like, I, I'm sometimes I'm like, whoa, I just read like five pages and I have no idea what I read. Right. Like, Cause right, I'm right. thinking of like the, all the other like stuff I, I should be writing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. That's what made it. That's what always made reading so hard for me is cause my brain was always in so many different places that I'm just like, I can't just sit here and absorb like the past 20 pages of whatever this chapter is. I, I don't even know. I don't even remember turning the last five pages, let alone remember <laughs> yeah. what the pages were. You know, uh, you, you talked about um, how you, when you do work or you get into a project, sometimes it will be in the middle of the night when you finish it. Right. And um, I know you have a ton of stuff on your plate. How, like, how do you balance your time, or do you kind of just go? Yeah, no, I just, I just go. I definitely. Well, there's always client deadlines there's always self-imposed deadlines but i just i just go and the way that i work is i try to um get as much done in a day as i possibly can so by the time everyone in my house goes to bed you know you're talking 10 30 11 o'clock and i'm awake so i'm just like you know i could i could squeeze in like another two jobs before i go to sleep like i have i got the energy so i'll sit down at 10 o'clock 11 o'clock at night and start the next t-shirt design or, you know, do all the logo sketches for tomorrow or whatever it is. And I'll just do it. So I'll do another day's worth of work, another six or seven hours worth of work at 10 o'clock at night or whatever it is. Like sometimes that's just what happens. Sometimes I start earlier and there's just, I just break for meals or whatever, you know, but like I said, man, it all comes down to the fact that I love what I do. So I, I just, I would rather be designing and drawing and stuff than sleeping. So it's, yeah. um, yeah, I think it kind of comes with the territory. Yeah, I, I'm the, being a night owl is, is sometimes tough. <laughs> yeah, because you end up staying up way later than you want to because you like, you get especially into a project. Right. It's it, sleep definitely is the first thing to go. There's so many times too where my wife is just like, "Come to bed early tonight. Don't stay up all night again." You know, like there's sometimes where it catches up to me and I'm exhausted and I can't. I'm definitely slower the next day. Not all the time, but sometimes. But, you know, I'll be like, yeah, yeah, you know, I don't have it in me tonight. I'm going to come to bed early. And and I'll be working on a project or something. It's 1030. And I'm like, 
all right, 11.30, 12 o'clock, that's a good time to go to bed. It's easy. You know, and I'll look up and the clock will say 11.30. And I'll be like, cool. I got like another 45 minutes in before I go to bed. And I'll be working, I'll be working. And I look up and the clock's like 2.45. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> how did that happen? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so it's just, sometimes it just happens. I, I mean, I'm I'm pretty much convinced that like time is bullshit. <laughs> and it's just like the universe is screwing with me sometimes. Because I'm like, there's no way that I look down for two hours and then put pick my head back up like that was definitely 15 minutes you know like yeah. there's just no way that that just happened but it happens all the time so i guess that's i guess that's the spacing out part that that comes with it too yeah it's the same for me at work i i'm like how is this going so long and then i get home and i'm like all right i got two hours before like i because i have to wake up for an interview or or whatever and right. then that it's just gone. Yeah. Like before I even like have started, I was like, all right, I made myself a snack <laughs> and that took 45 minutes somehow. I love how that works. It's, it's, it's the magic of life. <laughs> yeah. And as you get older, it just goes so much faster too. It's so, so much weird. faster. Yeah. So much <laughs> faster. <laughs> uh, John, I wanted to ask you in general, what does art and creativity bring to your life? I mean, it's, uh, it, it, yeah, I mean, it just, it is my life. I, I feel lucky to be able to live the type of life that I lead. You know, I mean, I work my ass off for it. Don't get me wrong. But, um, if I didn't have some of these things already stuck inside my brain when I came into this world, you know, I wouldn't be able to do it. So I think that it's just art and creativity. Like I, I'm constantly engulfed by it at all times. I'm, I'm lucky enough to be married to, you know, a great woman that is also really super creative and, and we're constantly just like challenging each other's creativity and, you know, intellect of whatever. And our daughter is like super creative too. And it's great. I mean, the three of us together are just like constantly, you know, into drawing or music or movies and TV shows or, you know, you know, exhibits of stuff like, it's just something that is so much of who we are that there's no way to separate it. There's it, there's no like I work in an ad agency or I work at a design studio and I come home and then I I have a drink and I do this and I hang out with friends. Blah, blah, blah. There's like it's just anything that we do that's more of like the normal type of aspect of life. I think where people are just like, you know, we're going out to dinner with friends or we're doing this. So anything that's like that type of thing I think is – more of the rare aspect of our life than it is like the creative artistic side. Um, so it's just like so built in and so embedded that it's just, it just is, you know, and it's cool. It's, it's great. I'm, I'm, I'm so psyched that we are at that point where we're able to be like that. Um, because for so long I tried to, to live that life and it was very hard to do for so many re I mean, it's hard because it's, it's a different type of lifestyle, you know, it's, um, it's not the easiest thing to do if you're not used to it or especially if you want to be like that and you and you can't sustain it that makes it really hard too you know so a lot of it comes along with the fact of I've been doing this so long that I'm able to do this type of thing but it's the only way of life that I know at least now so I'm you know hopefully it stays that way <laughs> no I'm sure it it will <laughs> um Kind of going along to, with that, and I'm I'm just realizing how long we've we've been going. I'm gonna have to split this into like two episodes. I think. <laughs> um, Double disc. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, actually, this this conversation never happened. I'm just gonna <laughs> make make sure there's no paper trail of it. Um, but yeah, like going back to that, like to to someone who isn't at that point yet, like who is trying to balance that let's get into our our final push where i where i ask you to kind of like grab that person by the shoulder who who wants to do it and kind of give them that final push to, and just push them into incorporating creativity into their lives or or design or, or whatever it is that they want to do i think that and i've i've said this in q and a's i've said this during lectures i've said this so many times in front of students in front of other professionals <laughs> and it's like it's, I think it's the best way to describe this. Um, and it's that we will all die at some point. 
you're gonna die, I'm gonna die. What? Yeah. <laughs> We're all going to die, and it's gonna happen, <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> great. This has been a great interview. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> I mean, it's like if you have if you have a desire to push a create creative lifestyle, a creative something, and you live and you're lucky enough to live in a place like us where we do have, you know, relatively you know extensive freedoms. I, I mean, there's no excuse. You know, if you want to do it, then just do it. Because if you don't do it, you're going to be on your deathbed one day and you're going to be like, I wish that I was, I wish that I was able to do that, you know, and, um, the only person you can blame is yourself, you know, so it's, it's, no one's holding you down. There's no conspiracy. There's nothing like that. If you have the desire, you know, and, and I, 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 I say it all the time. I'm like, I'm nowhere near the best at what I do. I'm nowhere near the best artist, the best illustrator, the best lettering artist. I'm, I'm nowhere near the best at anything. But I think I have such desire to just make it my life that I'll do whatever it takes to make sure that I'm being the best at it that I can. And trying to utilize things I've learned along the way to help bring me to a level where people will care who I am or what I do. And that's the only way that you can sustain it. So if you can... If you have a lot of tools or if you have a small amount of tools, you just make the most out of what you got and you just take it and you run with it and you just you just do it, man. It's like if you don't do it, somebody else will, you know, so it's like you can be the person that sits in a cubicle all day or, you know, whatever, the, you know, like that type of typical person who hates their lives and counts down to five o'clock every day or you can – you know, sacrifice a bunch of stuff for a while and, and try to figure out a way to make it work and, um, you know, just make it happen. I think if you really, really care about it, you're not going to need a push from someone like me. I think like, like I never went, I never went to a big design school. I never went and had a big internship. I, you know, like all the stuff I did is just because I wanted to do it. Um, and there was definitely some lucky breaks along the way, but I think everybody gets them at some point. You just have to be able to take advantage of them and make them happen. So it's like, if you don't do it for you, no one else is going to do it for you. No one's going to hand you anything. You got to work for it and you got to make it happen for yourself. So if you got it inside of you, let it go and just, you know, whatever it is, man. And you, it could be the stuff that you don't think anybody would ever care about. Like I've talked about this a lot of times too. It's like, I tried to sell lettering and my style of illustration to people for years and no one wanted it, you know? But I happened to be at the right place at the right time when that type of thing actually started to become desirable. And I was around and I had already had years of that experience in my portfolio. And it's just like, oh, well, here you go. This is what you want. I got that. I've done that. You know, and it's just if you want something so bad that you just have to do it, you're going to do it. And you're not going to need to hear it from anybody. So, um, you know, that's it, it's not really advice, I think. I think it's more of just kind of like telling it how it is. But um, if it's, if it's a drive and a passion that you have, you just, you're going to do it. You're going to find a way to do it. And we live in a time period where I think it's easier than ever to do that. You know, like we're on a podcast right now. This might as well be a radio show in 1945. You know, this is like, it's a new era of mediums that we're able to exist in. And it's so much easier to do it than it ever was before. So, you know, like people can start clothing companies like, like that, like now. I, I just started a new clothing company. There we go. You know, like I want to do a podcast. Fine. I bought the microphone. I got the SoundCloud account, like whatever. Like it's done. Like it's, it's so much easier to do it now than ever. So, I mean, more than ever, there's no excuse to do what you want to do. Because if you just keep working, people will care. People will see it. You know, they'll notice your passion for it and they'll notice how, how much you're putting into it. And, and, it, it'll make a difference. And that, that's all it really is. You know, it's just the old, the old Nike saying, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> just do it. No, I love that. I got the chills, dude. <laughs> that's awesome. That's good, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> and just going back to what you were saying about, um, you know, lucky breaks. I think that a lot of people wait for like this lucky break to kind of happen. Like they, I, I don't know what it is. Like they wait for someone like if they want to be a writer, someone would be like, hey, here's a book deal or like, right, right. you know what I mean? Before you've even done anything. And I think it's like important to just kind of like 
tell yourself to say out loud, oh, I'm going to write a book or, oh, I'm going to write or you tell other people. It makes right. them kind of accountable for you. Like it makes them, you know, just I think just saying it and just starting to do it, that that's when the breaks come because then you tell people about it and then they're like, hey, I know this guy or whatever. That's when they come. And I think a lot of people are just think that the universe kind of owes them right. just like some kind of lucky break before they even get started. Right. I think, without doing any work. I think there's three important words to remember as a creative person, and that's pay your dues. You have to trudge through all the garbage and all that stuff to get like I mean, if you were if you were in the military, you don't you're not just like a general right away. You know? You gotta start from the bottom and go through boot camp and all the training and all that stuff. Have people spit on you and kick the shit out of you and all that <laughs> type of stuff. You know, like that's what you need because when you get to each following level you appreciate what you endured to get to that level. You know, it's just like you earned that next level. And I think that is what's so important about what people seem to miss out on. It's like it's not just a lucky break. It's all the other stuff in between, all the bad stuff in between that makes you appreciate where you are and how you got there. You know, that is that is what's the truly satisfying part about any type of success, I think, is enduring the whole – you know, like any t- – like. You watch the, you know, you watch the World Series or the Super Bowl or something. Those guys go through a whole year of, of injuries and, and, you know, personal issues and all these types of things and ups and downs and, um, you know, relationship problems with their teammates or whatever. But when it's, when it's all said and done and they win at the end, it's just like this. I mean, that's why they all run onto the field and hump and hump each other, <laughs> hug each other. <laughs> I guess a lot of these guys do. Football, you watch. They're so, they're so happy. I mean, why not, right? <laughs> yeah, why not? Okay. But like, you know, like that's where it all comes from. It's the release, man. It's like we made it. That's the that's the level. That's what you were fighting for this whole time, and it's just it pays off. And you know, get to humping. <laughs> <laughs> get to humping. What a perfect perfect spot to end. Much much better than everybody dies. <laughs> John, thank you so much for for coming on the show today. Um, you can find John uh, on his website, johncontino.com. That's C O N, or sorry, J O N, because you could misspell that That's too. J O N C O N T I N O, johncontino.com. Uh, on Twitter, at John Contino. Uh, Instagram, Tumblr, Pinterest, uh, John Contino. Um, Facebook's a little different. Can you just say that for us? Yeah, I know you said it. It's uh, Alpha Struct Aesthetologist. So. Yeah, and you can you can look that up on the show notes. That's the easiest way. No, just sound it and, out. Uh, sound it out. You write it down. It's a piece of cake. <laughs> uh, and you can also check John's uh, work on uh, past lives, uh, which is pastlives hyphen ny dot com. John, thank you again so much uh, for giving us that push today. This was an awesome conversation. I can't believe uh, how long it lasted. This this <laughs> it got away from me. So I think I do have to split this up into two episodes, which I which I hope people don't get mad about. Dude, I you i was going to talk a lot i uh <laughs> I, I could i could go for another two hours if you if you need to fill out a season or something but i'll let you go <laughs> <laughs> hey well i would love to have you back on the show yeah man i'm always open thanks for having me it was, it was a lot of fun it really was a lot of fun and uh thank you john so much for coming on the show and giving us uh, two episodes worth of of material uh to sink our teeth into uh really inspiring stuff and <laughs> you know it's true you know, we're all going to die at some point. So it's just a matter of actually doing the work and putting in the time to pursue the things that are, you know, on your mind and in your heart and that you know that you kind of have to do. Uh, it's just a matter of actually doing it to put in the time. And as John said, to, you know, pay your dues. Time for a few iTunes shout outs. Sergeant Storm gave your creative push five stars on iTunes. He said, as a creative myself, I really enjoyed this podcast. And if you're a creative, you will too. Great job. Cleaning Coach said, thanks. This is a motivating and inspiring podcast, and I'll be listening often. Tux B said, I love your show. Very cool. B Stab said, great show. Episode 1 has me a believer, and now I am a subscriber. Mark Smith 111 said, great to find this podcast about the arts. Host Youngman Brown brings on some very interesting guests to talk about creativity and just doing the work. I even found a fascinating artist to follow on Instagram after listening to one episode. And String5 said, As a creative myself, it's great to find this show because it covers a variety of creative areas. Music, photography, writing, and more, rather than focus on one area only. If you create and want to follow your passion, you've got to check out this show. Can't wait to hear more. 
So thank you everyone for those five-star reviews. If you love the show and you haven't left a five-star review yet, that's the best way you can help out the show, as I've said before, um, and I really, really appreciate it. It's one of the reasons that this show has just catapulted into the sky um, way beyond my expectations. Um, so you can just go onto iTunes or really whatever podcast player you listen to it on and just leave us a nice review. I will appreciate it so much, and I will read your review on the air. On tomorrow's show, we have Victor Yako. It was it was something where it was very conflicting because the drinking was preventing me from writing. But in the back of my mind, I felt like the drinking was inspiring me because I would have these thoughts at the end. Oh, you should write. I want to write. Um, but I would wake up with not another word written and, and not realize that the alcohol actually had to go for me to move forward. Uh, Victor comes on the show to share kind of a special message tomorrow, um, one that I think can resonate with a lot more people than you might think, um, the issue of alcoholism. He gives us his story and how it affected his creativity and how now that he is sober, he has replaced his need for alcohol with his need for creativity with his writing and the various other things that he is, is doing to spread this message. It's a bit of an extended episode, but I didn't want to split it into two because I think it's an important message. And even if you don't suffer from alcoholism, I think it's a really important episode to listen to because you never really know who does suffer from it or who is affected by it. So that is tomorrow. Um, Hopefully today you were pushed enough to get your work done. And if not, we will be here for you tomorrow. Thank you so much for listening, for subscribing, for rating and reviewing, for emailing me, for everything that you're doing to support the show. I really appreciate it. The best thing you can do for me, though, is go and get some work done. So turn off the podcast and turn off the internet and whatever other distractions you're doing and go and get your work done. Have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow.